Once upon a time, an intrepid explorer was wandering through the woods, when all of a sudden, she stumbled across a dragon. You know, no one's going to believe that story. Hello creatives. I just returned from my walk. It was nice. I like going for a walk in the woods. I never know what I'm going to see, even though I take mostly the same trail all of the time. Sometimes I see things like deer. I saw six deer one time run across the trail in front of me, two does and their fawns. And another time, my husband and I were walking on the ridge line and we saw what well, we heard this really strange noise, looked up and hanging out of a little hollow of the tree was this baby raccoon just hanging there by his claws. I felt so bad for him, but he was way too high up for us to do anything. And I can only hope his mother was able to rescue him before he fell, but you just, you never know what you're going to see when you go on a hike. Even though we take the same route, there's little things along the way that I like to visit. There's a, there's a tree I call the mother tree because she sort of stands alone. She's quite regal, but she has all these younger saplings around her. And then there's, speaking of saplings, another area along the ridge where there's nothing but saplings and a few of the older trees are still left there but mostly the wind has blown them all down and i call that the baby tree nursery <laughs> but yeah yeah going on a hike sometimes is like telling a story isn't it do you find that you have stories when you go on hikes you just never know even when you go on the same trail the same walk all of the time I've been studying some ancient Chinese painting styles lately, and I thought it might be kind of fun to use that to tell a story of a walk, draw your hike. And so I thought we'd try that today. But before we do that, I have some examples of those kinds of paintings to show you. So let's take a look. This first painting is on Wikipedia, and you can get a better look at it if you go to Blue Green Shan Shui. The painting's name is called Emperor Mingguan's Journey to Sichuan, as you can see here. Um, unlike Western paintings, this isn't just a landscape with a pretty view. It has four different parts to it. And you'd think you'd start over here on the left, but that's not how to read a scroll. We really have to actually start here on the right. And um, the, this painting actually takes us through this journey that the emperor took through the mountains. I'm not sure what the destination was, but we'll see that when we look at the detail at the end. So the first thing I think we should click into this first scene over here on the right and maybe I can get this a little bit bigger so we can see it. There's all these people, the travelers, there they go, all the travelers, um, and the emperor there at the front on his horse, he's in red. Um, he's the important guy. He's about ready to cross the bridge, but it's a pretty big uh, group of people that are traveling with him. And they're fairly detailed whereas the scenery around them just sort of points to them um, that's a nice little compositional technique um, they're going to go ahead and cross that bridge um, and they've come down from the mountains up above you can actually see people still up high and they move on and it looks like in this second part they're actually making a camp I can see them all the, the travelers have taken their packs off the horses are kind of rolling around acting like they're pretty happy to lose their saddles. Um, 
again, um, the people are detailed, but the landscape isn't so much. Um, and up above, it's just kind of clouds and um, the mountain peaks, but nothing to really draw our eye. I really love how they did the clouds in this. I think it's great how it shows waves of white and the burnt sienna on the, on the um, scroll, on the scroll color. But the mountains themselves are not really that detailed. And then if we look at the next scene, um, they move on and they're kind of crossing through this tunnel or something. I'm not sure what that is. Maybe it's just behind the rock. Um, there's not so many people in that one. And then they go across another span and now they're going up this steep hill, which I guess is to their destination. Let me see if I can get further up here. Yes, there's um, more people going up the hill and then they get up to these balconies. Um, and then up higher is just the clouds. And the way the mountains stick out, they kind of stop your eye. Um, so I really love how this tells a story. Um, this next page is from the Princeton Art Museum. And this one's called Valley and Mountains. It uh, was done in the mid 1600s to early 1700s and instead of going horizontally it goes vertically from the bottom to the top and you can see that um, your eye just kind of naturally travels along the mountain chain which is a really cool compositional technique I think so I'm gonna just zoom in here and we'll see if we can see some more detail so at the bottom is this building or a structure or something which has a lot of detail um, and then my eye goes up here to this bridge um, and kind of crosses. You know that's got to be a river there, even though they don't really show it. Um, and then goes up the, this little hills. And there's actually some more buildings back there. That you just can't hardly see them. And up to these rice paddies. And then up the hills again in this S shape and up into the higher mountains. And then here we've got some clouds again. So the composition in these is really amazing. If I zoom out, can you, let me see if I can, can you, can you see the S shape better? Let me see if I can do that. There, can you see the S shape now? So those are a couple of examples that I thought were interesting, but I have one more that I wanna show you. It's a practice painting I did in the blue green style. It's hanging up on the wall over there. Let's go take a look. So this is my painting that I did as a practice painting for a lesson that I saw in this book called Chinese Landscape Painting. It's by Lian Quan Zen, and it's an excellent reference if you're interested in learning more about Chinese style painting. I started this with a drawing that I transferred to watercolor paper using ink and a brush. Then I used burnt sienna watercolor paint to create form with shadows and highlights. Next I used indigo blue and fuchsia green to add the color. And finally I added details. I painted in the little house, added some gold outlines, and used a technical pen on some of the trees. Now here's an example of how I added shading to the clouds. First, some clean water is put into the cloud shape. Then some burnt sienna is touched in at the edges. Then I used a clean brush to fade it out. In part three of this video series, we'll take a closer look at this. Okay, I'm back and I wanted to show you what we're working towards. Um, this is a quarter sheet of Arches, Arch watercolor paper. This is just the back of a practice painting that I did for something else. Um, but the measurements on this are 15, about 15 inches one way by 11 inches another way. So if we want to put our final picture on something as large as this, we need to have a drawing paper. And I just, I just roughly cut up a piece of paper 
about that size. And now keep in mind, we probably are going to want to border around it. I, I like to tape down my edges, so I'm going to have probably half inch to three quarters of an inch around here that, uh, that I won't be drying on. I also suggest you could do it on tracing paper if you don't want to do it on drawing paper. Um, there's no real advantage to the tracing paper in this particular instance because what we're going to do once we have it this this is the drawing that i used for my own practice blue green uh, practice painting uh, i drew it on pencil and then the pencil was smearing of course on on the tra tracing paper so i had to go over my pencil with the pen and uh, that was quite a lot of additional work i didn't necessarily have to do because when you put this on uh, a light board or if you're going to copy it from a window by putting it on a window and having light shine through it that that's good I mean you need you need something where you've got you can see the light through the back but uh, but something a thin weight 65 to 90 pound drawing paper is probably sufficient so it's up to you use what you have you don't need to go out and buy anything for this uh, but what we will do once we get our drawing on this piece of paper is we will put our watercolor paper on top and then use a Prussian ink to trace it onto our watercolor paper. So that's, in, that's next time. <laughs> so the first step that we're going to do is decide what we want to put into our composition. And I have thought a little bit about this and put down a few things I would try to keep this under six things, mainly because we're not interested in getting into the details. We're interested in letting the viewer fill in the blanks of the story with their own imagination. And so let's just keep it simple. I've got four, five would be a good number. Six is a good number, but I probably wouldn't put any more than that in. Um, the next step is going to be figuring out how we're going to put this on the painting. And for that, we're going to use thumbnails. Now, I had to start on my drawing with deciding how my walk actually went. I started at a, you know, if I, if I went from left to right, I started at the bridge and then I go a little ways down a trail and then I actually cross another bridge, but it's kind of, I don't know if I want to put two bridges in there. Uh, and then I go up a steep hill um, and that's where my, my mother tree lives up there. And then um, I go across this big clearing area, which actually is where transmission lines go across the property. And it really, it's at the top of the hill. So I get this great view on both sides one side down into the valley and the other side down into the park and then um, i go up into the top of the ridge line where the baby trees live <laughs> the baby tree nursery then there's actually the teenage nursery after that and then i go down that set of switchbacks back to the parking lot area now already you can see this looks kind of weird but um, we can turn that into something interesting by figuring out how we want to put these on the paper. So um, I'm going to move this a little bit. Let's see. Yep, you can still see it. My paper shape is actually like this. And just for simplicity, I'm going to say, well, maybe I want... Okay, first of all, I guess you need to decide what the focal point is. And in my case, I think the focal point is going to be that initial the initial starting point with the bridge because that's where I want someone's eye to go when they first look at the painting. So in general, a focal point looks best. I'm not saying this is a rule. This is just it looks best if you use the rule of thirds and you put it on one of these points here. So my choices are any one of these. I could, I could put it here and then make the eye go this way, which is not natural for Westerners to do, but that would be something interesting, right? Um, I could put it up here and, and go this way, 
which would work pretty well. I could put it here and go this way, which also would work really well. I think that, that this point actually works better than here. Or I could put it here and go up like this. So let me start by doing a thumbnail like this from, from this focal point. If I did it that way, I would have my bridge up here, right? And it's kind of going to um, a trail area. So I would have to put my mountain here with the trail area. Uh, and then somehow I would have to draw the eye down to this area. And the next thing after the bridge is mother tree, right? So I need the mountain with my mother tree. Uh, and then my next thing is actually, I think I'm going to put this clearing in. So my next thing would be the clearing. So somehow I would have to make the mountains maybe go down like this so that your eye goes this way to the clearing. And then from there, I'm going down this, this um, switchback area to the beginning which isn't too hard. I mean, I could put mountains like this and, and you know, put switchbacks here and then just open them up at the base of this bridge again. And then, and then we have come full circle. So that's one idea. It's, it's not bad. It's not bad. I, I have a little bit of problem with this part actually, because I'm not sure how I would get the eye to go other than, I guess I could make a little trail that goes something like this. But it's actually coming in behind this mountain. I mean, not really. <laughs> we're looking flat down onto this. It's not, we're not trying to show perspective. If I was trying to show perspective, I, this wouldn't work at all. But uh, just thinking out loud, I'm not liking how this comes in because I want, I want, I kind of had in mind that the viewer is going to look at this tree going this way. So let's, let's try moving the focal point over to this corner and see what happens, right? So I'm going to do another thumbnail. This time I'm going to start with my open area and a bridge. My bridge is actually flat. I have to keep that in mind. Um, and then I have another part of the trail after the bridge was the mother tree. So um, you would go up the hill to the mother tree. Right. And we've got hills here. Um, after that you go through and then there's that nice clear area with the view. Actually this is kind of neat because the view here is of the bridge which isn't the way it is in real life but it is in the picture and I like how it tells that story. And then we have the switchback. So after after here, we go up to here, and I have more mountains. And look at look at how nicely the switchbacks open down into this. I think this is going to be the better composition. So let's go ahead and do a little bit better thumbnail of this before we put it onto some drawing paper. So I had a little bit of issues with lighting and I went ahead while that was being taken care of and continued work on the thumbnail sketches. Here I, uh, I was just kind of getting some basic shape ideas and ironing that out in my head how I wanted to put that flat area in up in the corner of the painting. Um, and then I tried putting some tone in to see how that kind of looked to my eye if this still was if the white areas, the lighter areas, were still providing some flow. And they actually are <laughs> giving, uh, giving this circular uh, path for the eye. And then I went back and I looked at some um, examples of those Chinese paintings online and got some ideas. This was how I thought would be a great way to show that switchback. This was from kind of like the emperor, uh, the Emperor's Journey that I showed you a little while before. Uh, this was how I thought I could put in that flat area in the mother tree. Uh, and then I, I kind of got an idea of how to do my bridge here. So these are the things that you're going to want to do. You're going to want to take time now and iron out how you're going to do the composition because you're not going to get a second chance once you put it onto watercolor paper. We will be using ink 
and a brush to put it onto paper. So uh, that's not going to erase. <laughs> you want to make sure you have your marks down pat. The next thing we're going to do, um, it, and also one thing I forgot to mention is once we get it onto the paper in our final composition, we want to add some things that we've, we've got ways to attract the eye and make it go around this path, but we want to add things to stop the eye too. I don't know if you remember in that original painting that I showed online how the clouds sort of stopped your eye from going any further. We can we can block corners of the paintings painting by using clouds or lines. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to make a larger drawing using the, this composition. Uh, well, this is my composition. You're going to use your composition on a 15 by 11 inch sheet of paper so that we can transfer it over to the watercolor paper on the next time. Make sure when you do this that you place your major components first and then go back and add any details because it's going to be easier to erase. Um, maybe you don't want a, a rock sticking out or maybe the mountain needs to be going a different direction. Um, it's going to be easier to do that once you get your major parts in place before you put in anything like houses or fences or trees or anything like that. So I'm going to go ahead and get started on my drawing. I'm going to fast forward this film up a little bit so that uh, you're, well, you're not bored and so that this video can fit into a reasonable time length. So here goes. <laughs> Okay, well, I think this is where I'm going to leave it for now. Um, I got partway through the original concept and I thought, you know, we really need something here in this corner. So I added some mountains here and these little lines are just kind of areas where I thought I would be doing some trees or some kind of foliage. And again, let's check the composition we've got something blocking you from going this way if we look at here's where the eye is going to go as soon as you go to hopefully <laughs> as soon as you look at the picture the eye should go this way there's nothing really to look at here we've got these diagonal lines that kind of stop the eye from going this way um, and we've got more lines going up this way so it should travel up this way to the tree and then it's possible it could go this way, but see, we've got these lines here with the clouds, so I'm hoping we can get this going out this way. And then we've got not much here. This this line is the predominant line going back down to my focal point, and it kind of opens up to the focal point. So I'm pretty happy with this composition. It's very similar to the practice painting that I did. And when you do yours, I encourage you to go find some examples of blue-green style Chinese paintings and see if there are some aspects of um, these masters that you can copy onto your own work to represent the major landscape features that you chose from your hike. I had fun drawing my walk today and I hope you did too. Please hit like and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more content like this. Next time, I'll be showing you how to practice mark making with ink so we can transfer our drawings onto watercolor paper. Until then, I hope you find more ways to make life your art. Happy drawing!